is Carol Mae Wittick. Welcome to Her Conversations, Tools for the Awakening. Her is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. This is the optimal state to embody in order to attract our highest desires. What is the awakening? This is the moment in time when humanity rises up out of the darkness. Who is awakening? Each one of us present on earth today, claiming our sovereignty, seeking greater possibilities in our reality and looking for solutions. We know being awakened is not a lofty ideal, but a necessity. If we can transform ourselves, we can change the world. Guests on Her Conversations will speak to your spirituality, sensuality and soul. Listen to their stories and hear how they are in service to the world. Let their words and these conversations embolden and inspire you. My guest on this week's episode is coach, speaker, guide, Laura Jane Bolton, who in her own words is serving during this awakening by helping freedom lovers feel well, embody sovereignty and navigate these crazy times with less stress, greater joy, peace and ease. During our conversation, we discuss how this shift has activated a purpose in so many of us. We talk about how stepping into your truth has cost so many of us long-term relationships, which has been painful, but also has opened space in our lives to connect with authentic, like-minded souls. We also touch on the way that the wellness and the spiritual communities have responded to this time, and the need to cultivate compassion as more people awaken, and so much more. So as always, I begin by asking my guests. Her is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. When do you feel your most her? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. (laughs) Higher energetic resonance. I think for me, it's like, it's really when I'm in flow, like when I'm really in my heart space and I'm doing something which like, you know, I'm in gratitude, like I'm really like connected with my heart. Um, And especially if I'm doing something expressive, so with music, with, with dance, um you know those things are like for me like I'm in a very high like (laughs) like frequency when I'm when I'm doing those things but yeah for me like you know really just being grateful and and being you know in my heart and feeling like really connected to myself and to others like that's when I I really feel um feel that I think yeah perfect (laughs) <laughs> I love asking people that question because you just kind of have to go into a certain place that you can't just say it. You have to kind of move into it. And feel yeah, it. I could feel. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. where am I? Like, <laughs> and then it kind of like sets everyone in the groove for like the conversation, you know. And and then we just go for there. And it's it's just um, yeah. Thank you, spirit, for giving me that idea <laughs> all those years ago. Um, but anyway, before we get into kind of talking about all the things that we can talk about, I just wanted if you could just introduce you as, as your work and what you're doing now and what has brought you to this moment. And then we can expand on, on that, on how that relates to what's happening in the world right now. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. What, I guess what the, the work I'm doing in the world um, has really kind of evolved over the last couple of years with the, um, you know, the events <laughs> Um, prior, you know, prior to that, I've for a few uh, back in the past, I was a change management consultant, um, and then I had a lot of health issues, like various different mental and um, physical health issues, and I was in the corporate world, and I was burnt out, and I had all these problems, and so I left and spent some time, you know, naturally healing myself, and then that was like a doorway into. Um, studying and um, becoming a high performance health coach so I was really like into the biohacking and you know health functional medicine like holistic everything and um, yeah and so I've been doing that for a few years with with clients one-on-one but then when everything happened like a couple of years ago when it all started kicking off (laughs) I was like something like happened to me and like I just got really activated like I just was like, I need to be sharing about this. I need, like, and I was going further down the rabbit hole and, you know, all of these things that so many of us have, have done. Um, and, and I really, you know, realised that actually all the things I've done in the past have kind of led up to this point. I don't know about you, if you maybe feel that way. Like, all the things we've done and the experiences that we've had, like, have kind of led, um, led us to this point. 
And I really, as time went on, you know, I was getting a lot of people who are like awake, contacting me, telling me how much they're struggling. I was, you know, observing this online. I was going through my own process too. And so my work has really evolved to support those types of people, you know, people who are aware, people who are pro-freedom, people who, you know, really want to be part of creating a better world, Mm -hmm. helping them with themselves, like helping them with their well-being, um, with their, you know, particularly with their mental and emotional health, because that's where my focus was was going anyway. Um, and, And also how to actually navigate this life, you know, as you know, as it stands, you know, with everything that's going on, all of the situations that we face, mm-hmm. like all of the challenges as aware people um, that we're experiencing on the daily, like how do we deal with those scenarios, those experiences, those challenges? How do we heal? Because I think now is a perfect opportunity. It's the opportunity for us all to do the inner work you know, and I've been doing this for years and many people are now stepping into that. It's like we can't control everything outside of us, like, and we have to do that inner work in order to evolve and to become resilient and to be well um, as we move through this time because it isn't just going to suddenly all go away. <laughs> um, you know, this is, this is going to, you know, this is going to just be evolving and take a while. So, so yeah, that's like really what I do now. It's helping, um, helping people who are aware and pro freedom. Um, and you know, that's through things like coaching and workshops, but also I have an online membership community that's uh, launching very soon as well for people to, to get, you know, that wisdom and guidance, but also to be able to connect with each other and and um, and kind of learn and grow together. So, yeah, that's kind of a very long answer, but no, that's but kind of where I've come from. I'm glad you said all of that, and and like so much of what you said, I'm like, yeah, 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 because <laughs> especially with the, um, it felt, sorry, it felt <laughs> like the world just kind of flipped around a little bit. Uh, 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 you know 2020 March 2020 or whenever it, people really kind of noticed that there was something going on mm. and personally I saw that leading up to that um, even as even as recent or to that time as February 2020 there were still mm. things that I needed to remove from my life so previous to that I'd had to make a decision about stepping away from a real toxic family situation which was heartbreaking because it's like I'm having to like walk away from family and make a decision in my mind that in this lifetime, we might never connect again, but it's not Mm. working for me, you know? And it's just that that was a real big tear. And then a a legacy friendship that I thought was somebody that was like in my camp. It, you know, then I had to see again that that was something that I had to step away from. And then the final, um, kind of big tear was stepping away from a a community that I've been part of a spiritual community a a yoga community that I started to see to my eyes a lot of hypocrisy that didn't really gel with where I wanted to go so I had to like do these kind of real stepping away and tearing away from things and then as soon as um March happened March 2020 and everything kind of went like that I was like oh I get it (laughs) do you know it's like suddenly it made sense even though I was in no better a position in terms of the money in my pocket or where I lived or anything like that on paper it looked really bad for me yeah but yeah but it made perfect sense in terms of like everything like in the world just like turned around and I, I suddenly found that I was at the front of the queue and not the back you know and that's what yeah. it felt like to me as well and so all of that period of time has been watching how things have unfolded mm. um also watching how people who I thought had more to them and had done deeper levels of work to be able to handle and it, and remove themselves from the emotion, emotionality of things or any kind of po- political affiliation, you know, and get not get triggered by that, we'll be able to see that we're in a really, this is the time we've been talking about. You know, we've been talking about the Aquarian age, we've been talking about this and suddenly it's happening. And mm-hmm. everyone, you know, and so many people that I thought were strong just wanted to sit on a, on a bench and like sage it away and, and kind of meditate. Yeah. And just check it out yeah and I was just like so 
shocked and disappointed by it. you know it was just like oh, yes. I thought you were a warrior this kind of goddess spirit I like know. why are you not stepping up like have you seen that as yes well? of course like I've seen it loads and to be honest I think so many of us have like when I have conversations with other people like you and when I see things you know comments online or messages that I receive it's a it's a really um big thing and it's it's fascinating I mean the I think most of us have experienced, you know, as you were saying, um, you know, disconnection or, you know, from from friends, family, communities, maybe groups or clubs that we were part of. That's been happening a lot. And I feel like, you know, particularly 2020, it was a year of, I call it the year of unveiling. It was like the veil was being lifted on not just all the stuff that was happening in the world and the agendas and all of that stuff, but also on where people were at and mm-hmm. what people really, you know, believed and, and whether, you know, whether people were like, you know, really aware because there's many people that, you know, I, I went through this experience, you know, in, in 2020, when I first started um, speaking out, it was, you know, the spring when everything, you know, was happening and, and I was really shocked by the number of people who I was good friends with and people who I thought were, you know, really, like, savvy and aware. And and they were attacking me for being crazy, for being dangerous, for being a con- crazy conspiracy theory. Like, it was, it was a real shock for me. Like, initially, I wasn't expecting that to happen. I was, you know, just, wow, like these people are people I'm friends with mm. and I thought they were really aware and you know they they kind of do all the spiritual things or they you know they they talk the talk but then I was I was just fascinated by how so many people just can't see right like and I understand if you're watching tv all the time like my parents and you're like you know you're you're just like totally in the program like I get that but these people are like you know not really like that and yet they still couldn't see and even worse they were attacking me and unfollow I'm unfollowing you I'm unfriending you I was I'm like letting what? you know before they do it <laughs> yeah I just need like what one 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 friend like one person I've been friends with for many years messaged me and said like your posts are dangerous and they're damaging my mental health I'm unfollowing you now and that was it <laughs> And they weren't an online friend. They were like a real life friend. (laughs) And yet it was, so it was crazy to see, you know, and I I think one of the reasons is like that our our traumas are being, like our trauma wounds are being really kind of um, triggered and, and brought up. And people are going into, you know, all sorts of like, um, you know, defensive states and they're shutting down or they don't want to like see it for what it is. Um, I think there's various different reasons, but it was just a really fascinating year to to see and to see who is aware and for those people to fall away from my life, you know, who who were not aligned Mm -hmm. and for, you know, to to then bring in new energy, new people into my life. And now I have like all these amazing connections with people who are like-minded and like-hearted and we're all kind of on a similar page even though there's differences you know in our opinions and stuff like we're all essentially on a um, similar page and it's great to know those people now and I'm super super grateful for it but that process of seeing and the loss or the sense of loss of friendships friendships and family members and stuff was was crazy and I know that many, many of us are going through that. You know, I, I have conversations with people all the time. So it's, it's, it's kind of, it, it's fascinating, but it's also quite, you know, emotionally, you know, it's, it's quite a, a, big, uh, a big thing. And it's, it's been a struggle for many, I think. Yeah. yeah. And it's, because um, I was speaking to a friend earlier, we were just doing kind of a catch up on things and she had a really emotional year last year in terms of like the same thing like things that weren't working people that were being was the year or the year before like it's two years you know <laughs> it's all one big blob of time I know. <laughs> and um 
but you know things that came to head and like relationships that she couldn't be with people that were deceiving her people Mm. that weren't supporting her finding out who was jealous of of what she was and what she was achieving um it's just it just kind of really revealed everything so as as the veil was coming down externally in the in the larger world then you were like close up just going a lot of your own life is built on bs as well you yes. know these relationships yes. are built on just like surface things and like you said a lot of the time your relationship with people is built on who you think they are because they're projecting something and you're buying yes. into the projection yes. and then as soon as you start to see it and you kind of see at the core of them like who they really are and sometimes what you see isn't very nice yeah no <laughs> and and yes. that's one of the things that I have to that I've had to um that I wrestle with a lot with my myself is I don't don't trust my initial um intuition but sometimes you know I'll I'll meet someone and it will and I just kind of what I see from them isn't very nice and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not a nice person is I just see the bs behind like the nice front bit and while everyone can kind of play the game like I kind of had like a bit of a resting bitch face and I'm tall and you know what I mean so all the things that like well I'll just kind of be like I just can't engage I can't engage with that and it just comes across in the worst way possible but there's just part of me that I won't I won't do that with you because I'm trying to be more real with myself and yeah. if I'm trying to be real in the world with myself, then I can't go around just having people that look good or sound good or say the right things or drive the right car or whatever it is. Those things have to come down. Yeah. And um, and what I'm understanding and having to reconcile is that sometimes what you see, the truth isn't always pretty and people's lies are people's lies and it's you know they're not necessarily doing it for evil reasons maybe they don't even believe in their selves to the extent that they can be the real person so they have to put this thing out yes. and most people will connect with that um but yeah. in terms of like things like healing i've been doing a lot of reflection especially over the christmas period of just kind of like sitting still and going over those periods of times where i kind of need to just replay a situation and forgive you know forgive that person or forgive myself or whatever and just really replay it so that you can be like stronger and more authentic because yeah the more I do that then the more I can have like d- just deeper conversations with people even on that level that is just so juicy because and like you say when you're when you're able to have those deeper connections and deeper conversations with people then when someone just wants to talk about stuff and celebrity and that it's just yeah <laughs> <there's so much laughs> more. <laughs> I know I can't honestly I I really relate to this like I just can't have those conversations like I literally and it, and as you say isn't it isn't a um you know a kind of judgment or criticism of of the other person it's just they're not aligned so for me it's a matter of alignment it's mm-hmm. like you know, we're, we're really starting to, I think, step into who we truly are. And like, as you said, like looking at like, what, what, what are we doing or who are we associating with or what habits do we have or anything, which just is, is not, you know, really aligned with who we truly are. It's, it's kind of like all just like, you know, surface level stuff. It's the stuff that we don't need. It's maybe stuff that's toxic to us, Mm -hmm. things that are weighing us down and, and, and we're being called really to, to look at that and to look at our lives, I think, and to, you know, look at what do we need to, what do we need to like get rid of and who, who are we truly? What, what are our values? Like what really matters to us? Like what do we care about? Mm-hmm. What are we interested in? Um, and so for me, like, you know, the last couple of years has been a, 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 a deeper level of self-discovery, you know, and self-exploration and really, you know, having the courage to shed what is not um, serving you. Mm. And that can be really difficult, you know, especially like people with friendships and family members and stuff. Like it can be, it can be traumatic. It can be, you know, it can be really challenging, but ultimately it makes us feel more free. Mm. Like the more stuff we 
shed that just isn't when something's not aligned we really feel it and i think this is why this is one of the reasons this is just my observation from the last few years of myself and of clients and of other people one of the key reasons that we feel like down or we might describe it as depressed or we just don't feel good is because we're not you know living in an aligned way we're perhaps putting out this image of ourselves to the world and then we're attracting people to that you know it's like there's all these kind of like it's almost like there's all these there's the real us and then there's these avatars that we've created and they're the avatars that are like you know attracting each other but then it's not who we truly are and so there's this there's this disconnect and you know and I, I remember getting to a point where I would sit and you know even before the all the pandemic and everything like I was getting to the point where I was sitting and having conversations with people, as you said, about very like mundane things like, oh, the latest TV series or what this celebrity was doing. And I literally felt like I was dying. Like I, in my heart and in my gut, I literally felt like a weight. I was like, I feel just so, I just can't bear this. It just felt really shitty. And I'm like, oh, it's because I'm just, this is not, in alignment with me this is not what I find interesting and so you know it's it, whilst it's challenging it's really important that we let go of those people or things which are not serving us because it really lightens us and it frees us up to mm. be who we truly are and to call in relationships and connections with people who are more aligned because the best thing about you know being authentic and being real and being you know honoring yourself is that you will attract people to that, people who are a similar, you know, similar energy. When we're being fake, we're not going to attract the right people. And, and people often say to me, like, I'm really struggling to find, you know, like-minded and like-hearted people um, who are, like, awake and pro-freedom and everything. And I say, well, are you putting yourself out there like are you speaking about what you believe like are you like what are you doing and it it usually turns out that they're not right. so I say well if you're not then how are you how are people going to know like how are people going to know that you're one of their tribe members when you're acting like somebody different you know and it, and it really it really I, I have experienced this myself so powerfully even when you know I've been into you know, when I was in the States, I've, I've been into, um, you know, like a restaurant or a cafe or whatever. And I walk in and I'm confident and I'm not wearing a mask, um, even though there's signs everywhere, you know, that you have to wear one. And, um, you know, and I go and sit down and I do my thing. And I have found that I actually have had people come up to me and said, oh, like, I noticed like, you know, you weren't wearing a mask or, oh, I really like your energy. And then you get talking to them and you realize that they're actually really similar to you, mm -hmm. even though you, and you wouldn't have known that if, you know, they wouldn't have come over to you if you'd been acting, you know, like sitting there wearing a mask, complying, like being like, you know, not putting yourself out there. And so I, I that's why I always encourage people to like really, you know, try and shed those layers, try and really get back to, you know, who you truly are and live from that place and you will attract the people and things and situations and all the stuff that you actually need for your you know highest good I really really do believe that and it's like magic as well isn't it it's like so effortless when you do that but the effort comes in actually just letting go of this kind of worldly version of you yes and then be prepared and I think even when it comes to wondering like when am I going to find all the things is be okay with spending time with like just digging into your own stuff you know what I mean and let it come up and don't you know that yeah. time when it when things come up and you're like oh my god I'm feeling anxious and you then you reach for whatever your coping mechanism is, whether that's, you know, a good good half an hour just scrolling up and down on social yeah. media or, <laughs> or food or, or like, you know, like we've got these yes. ways of like diverting ourselves and kind of like ignoring that call to actually yes. go into what we are. And everyone's having this opportunity. And, yeah. you know, when, when I think about things, especially when I'm, you know, walking around and I'm like six foot tall, so, you know, I'm like striding around with headphones in, it's like, you can just, you know, I'm not, I don't want to have an argument with you, but it's just better if you just 
just don't do it you know what I mean it's like <laughs> you do you me do me I'm fine I'm well I haven't had the thing it's all you know it's all fine yeah. um but then you know a lot of the time I'm looking into the eyes of people who are walking around and they're still you know complying with all of these yeah. regulations and rules that make absolutely no sense I and in know. particular in the UK where the narrative has completely switched now um and like every other day I'll kind of take a little look at like the daily mail front page <laughs> online you know because you're just like it's like what what are we supposed what's to- going on like yeah what what are they what are they telling us today yeah and <laughs> and like I think it was this week it went from one day it was like you know party gate and all of that bs and like the fact that you know we still got to be scared of this thing and then the next date was Jordan Jordan's like gone mad and's texting this but I'm like oh, wait, where's the pandemic <laughs> just like yeah. literally overnight and you're like I can't believe what's happening and it's crazy and and the thing is most people won't realize that they've just been led by the nose away from away from like li- literally like a yapping dog like dragged it's like we're not looking at that anymore we're going this way yeah and suddenly it's party gate and then um I mean like this morning I was like, speaking to someone because they were like in and I almost I had to you know I had to calm down and apologize because I didn't like realize it wasn't even eight o'clock and I was having this conversation <laughs> but it was because they were going all oh, you know they had this party and all this kind of look how terrible it is I'm like it's not terrible really it's like it's just showing you that they've been lying to you for two years and they can't come out and tell you directly so indirectly they're telling you that they you know apparently there was this thing jumping around and trying to kill us and the amount of people that used to leap away from me yeah from the pavement <laughs> into the road in the way of a potentially I know it's funny luckily, not funny I know <laughs> but luckily it was locked down so there wasn't that much traffic on the road otherwise you know that a lot of them would have been taken out by like a car <laughs> they jump out of the way of me <laughs> oh, and then they, like like uh, some like cartoon you know where they jump out and then the cavalry come and just completely flattens them yeah um so you, you're just kind of wondering about um, people not seeing that this, this thing has just literally gone left. And, and now it's like what they're telling you in an inadvertent way is that they lie to you, but they can't come out and tell you completely that they lie. Well, one, the only way that they can get you to kind of realise nothing was happening is just blame them. They were having a party and we weren't doing it. No, they lied to you. And you you got mugged off for two years. That's what's happened. And they can't tell you that. And then on top of it is like, oh, and by the way, there's a war now as well. And there's a war now. I'm like, there's not a war. Can you just like turn that shit off? <laughs> this is the thing. This is so true. If And you know what? If you literally turn the TV off, <laughs> there is nothing going on. Like I can tell you when I'm out and about, no one's falling dead. No. no one's like there, there is like there is nothing happening like and it's 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 fascinating to me to see just I mean I always knew that the 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 media and you know like other like things on our screens and stuff I've known for a long time that they are you know controlling and programming us but it's been really astonishing to see just how much and the power it, it's been surprising Like if somebody had said to me a couple of years ago, this is going to be the scenario in a couple of years. This is how much is going to have happened. And people will still be denying it or still going along with it. I'd say no way. Like you can't, like that's ridiculous. But here we are. Mm. And I do think a lot more people are starting to see. that's That's a positive. I really do feel that there's a shift happening. But Still, I mean, if I look at my parents, my ma- my mother is finally, after two years of me sharing all the things I share, she is finally seeing that the government are lying and they're trying to control us. Like she even messaged me the other day to say, they're trying to make us like China. They're trying to control us. Yes, mum, I've been saying this to you for two years. <laughs> Bless you. But... But my dad and other, you know, family members are still completely, completely bought in. They still think there's this terrible, deadly pandemic going on. And it's, it's fascinating. It's frustrating. Yeah. 
and it's been for me it's been a real lesson in surrender and acceptance like that's been a really big thing for me and I know it's something that a lot of people are going through and needing work that they're needing to do Mm -hmm. because the amount of frustration that I'm seeing in the aware community around people being asleep seems to be one of the biggest things that's causing problems for us yeah um for our men especially for our mental and emotional health like the comment i see all the time is people need to wake up or they're frustrated that they can't make someone wake up like i can't make my mum wake up or my friend or whatever like it's just this there's this need to make everyone see what you see and I totally get it because I've been there and it's frustrating and it's kind of disbelief it's like disbelief like how is this possible that people can still not see two years in like how but there's many reasons why you know and 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 we have to also you know just accept that everyone's on I think we need to accept that everyone's on their own path and actually if you know if we expect people to respect our sovereignty and expect Mm. and respect the way that we want to live we're really hypocritical if we if we're not granting them the same and so I think that you know the, the point I got to was to realize that I can be myself shine my light speak the truth as you know you know I do a lot online <laughs> like <glad>. I, <laughs> I can do all of that but I need to and send my parents all the things I've sent them but I need to accept that I can't control the impact that that has mm. so it isn't about not not sharing and not you know and just like leaving everybody to it and not trying to trying to make them see like I think that's a really positive thing and we've seen you know many people have woken up and many you know and that's because of all the things that that people like us are sharing and alternative media um but we have to accept that if they don't see they don't see so with my father for example like he just isn't in that place Mm. and it doesn't matter what I share it doesn't make a difference and so I don't you know I had a period of time where I would get frustrated by that and saddened by that because when you know the truth you want you just want everyone to see it and to stop being slaves you know um but it got to the point where I just thought no like there's no point me being frustrated or angry I have to just respect where he's at and just accept it Mm. and just be okay with it and just know that he's on his own soul path and it's just not his time um, you know, like with my mum, now is her time. It, how how much is she going to wake up? I don't know. It doesn't actually matter. It's like, it's just, I feel like everything just happens as it's meant to, you know. Why did I suddenly become super activated and like really, really aware a couple of years ago? It was, I genuinely believe it was part of my soul path. I came here for this. Yeah. This was, this was my time to you know, to step into, you know, who I truly am and what I came here to do. But not everybody is in that situation. And many are going to remain asleep. But also, there are many people who are really starting to see now, I think. I I, I mean, I don't know about you, but that's the sense that I get from when I look around and the people I speak with is that a lot more people are starting to see what's happening. I mean, with with that, um, like a, a, an old Facebook memory threw up the other day. Um, and someone, when I used to live in Crouch End, you know, Crouch End, yeah. <laughs> they, they, someone had sprayed on the ground one morning and um, it said, are you awake? And this was like seven years ago. And I'd taken a picture of it and put it on Facebook and I'd answered it going, yeah, I think so. And then as it came up, I reshared it and went, yeah. And it was a really lonely road back then. Because I was seeing all of this thing and blogging about all of this thing and writing about these things that I see, not even in terms of, um, you know, the the deeper conspiracies and and the deeper agendas, because there are a lot that I knew and there's still a lot of pieces that I just had to kind of like fit together over the past Mm. two years. And then also my work with Great Awakening Report allows me to kind of go deeper into different things. Um, but I just always had this kind of like black sheep mentality anyway, where I was just like watching the world go around, just going, I just am not part of this. I'm here, but I'm not part of this. And I'm trying to play the game and I'm trying to fit in and trying to do the things. And I just, it always feels counter 
to who I am and I was just you know so I'm used to like just getting a load of like slack slack for that (laughs) anyway for pretty much all my life so now that more people going oh I'm going through this I'm like okay welcome to the club yeah (laughs) because this is like like, I know I've been there yeah yeah (laughs) yeah I've had like you know a a, a lifetime initiation of just being the odd one out and being thought the crazy one and and all of it and people didn't really use the language of conspiracy theories at that point Mm. in time not too much because I wasn't really throwing the big ones at them. Yeah. You know, like, it's like, <laughs> it's like every, now and, every now and again, I'd meet someone go like, can we have a 9-11 chat? Is that all right? You know, yeah. <laughs> let's kind of like pull that story to bits and like two yeah. or three like sensible questions will break that whole thing. Yeah, down. I know. I know. And again, again, it's like there's still like, you know, the, the majority of people still, you know, believe the official story and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it is a lonely, like it, it can be really, really lonely. And I know so many people are going through this now. And if anyone's listening to this, who is, who is going through that, like, just know that like, there's so many of us out here um and and that's one of the beautiful things that's happened over the last couple of years is it's shown who we are like it's shown who are the awake people where are they Mm. you know and it's it's allowed us to connect and to not feel so alone because when you are when you feel like you're the only one and everything else around you and the way that everybody else is behaving around you is counter to that it's it's really painful. And I remember like quite a few years ago when I was very much, I would say I was still in this kind of make very much the matrix 3d world. And I was, I was really like miserable and I felt really depressed all the time. And I now know it was because I just was so my, 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 my true being, my true self was just not aligned with how I was living. You know, I had like, you know, the, the house and the corporate job and like going to the pub every Friday and doing the same thing and watching TV. And it was just like, I felt like, you know, like literally my, you know, my soul was dying. Um, And then, you know, just, just realizing that like the more and more I woke up and the more I started to learn about how, how things are in the world and what's really, you know, the truth and how much of my life has just been like, most of my conditioning and everything is all been lies like most of everything I thought I knew is lies like it can be very traumatic and this is the dark night of the soul right it's like having this awakening and being like pretty much everything is just a lie like and the way I've been living is a lie and like everything and it's it's and and I I really my honestly my heart goes out to people who are like who have only just begun to 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 wake up in the last year or two um because it can be a real <laughs> shock it can be a real shock but the good thing is there are so many of us yeah out here and it's obvious who we are now see before it wasn't obvious who the people were but now you know you could very clearly see when you you know when you're online the people that you know follow and the people that like connect with with the content and you know mm. the people that unfollow you like it's kind of like this it's almost like a little filtering the and last couple of years has been a filtering system. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're gone. Oh, you're gone. All right, then. Never mind. You know what I mean? Never mind on that thing. But um, one thing I wanted to like talk about as well when you're talking about us wanting people to be awake and then also people seeing things around them and not connecting is just like the the word that just came up to me was like ego. Um, in that one is is it part of our ego wanting to be the one that kind of cracked the thing for them you know even it's like I did it you know I got an awake one but it doesn't you know it's all about just dropping seeds and then eventually the weight of the truth will kind of trigger them out of the the slumber but then also with those people who are still really caught in the deception and caught in the whole um, matrix of lies and everything I'm wondering because you know of course I'll never I'll never really know and maybe they won't even speak in this kind of language or think about things in this kind of way that they're Mm. seeing all of this stuff and the analogy that I always use is like um if you if somebody keeps telling you that your partner's cheating on you initially you don't want to believe it it's like they're not no 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 and then more and more you start to see more evidence that it's Mm -hmm. true but you still don't want to kind of, you know, you're still living in this denial bubble and you'll push back at anyone who dare to admit it. And then there's a part of you that when you're starting to see 
unsurmountable evidence yeah. and you realize that it's like you can't deny what's happening but there's that one bit where you actually have to step into the fact that it is actually happening and leave your entire yeah. old world behind you for so many people who may or may never wake up is that holding on to the lie because stepping out of the line realizing the deception on that level is a trauma in itself and they don't know if they're going to be able to handle all of that it's like how can you handle you've been looking up to government you've you've worshipped the royal family you think celebrities are amazing you just you know you've bought into big farm you've 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 um got the car you've got the job you've got all mm-hmm. of the things and you've lived your life in the way that you should have and then suddenly someone goes it's bs and then it all proves itself to bs your entire life just comes down yeah. How many people can step through that and 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 think that they're, they'll psychologically be able to kind of reconfigure into this new space? Yeah. So I don't know Absolutely. how many people are in that kind of that spot of like seeing things, because I'm sure I see with people who are not my friends, but friends of friends that are just being bombarded with truth for two years now and they can't deny the evidence of what they're seeing and yet they're holding on to stuff. And they're like, at one point, you can't keep holding on to the sinking ship. You know, the Titanic is going down. It's like either you jump off or you go down with it. Yeah. I just wonder, like, you know, but then they, they don't think of things in that way in order to have that conversation. But that's always an area of fascination for me. It's like, yeah. where, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? Are you scared? Do you think it, do you still think it's BS? Like, look at what's happening around you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it really, it it really is fascinating. And I think that, I think there's quite a few different reasons why people kind of stay asleep and believe the official narrative. And, and I think that it can be, um, I don't know, it can, it can differ from person to person, but I think, you know, to your point, ego is, you know, definitely, you know, part of this. And it, it's like a subconscious thing. Like we, 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 it's so painful, I think, for some people, for people's psyche, like it's so painful that, that, our, that our, our ego, you know, or we, we, there's a protection mechanism there. Mm. It's like, you know, it's like I remember, you know, having conversations with my mom and she would totally contradict herself in a sentence. Like she would say she didn't trust the government, but then she would say they wouldn't do what I said that they're trying to do. And she would like, do, there would be all of these contradictions. And I'm like, what, why can't you see? And then she would change the subject to something completely different. And it's almost like we just won't allow it to even come into our consciousness. It's like this cognitive dissonance of just it's just so painful Mm -hmm. to see and to admit it because it destroys everything as you said it destroys everything it destroys your whole your whole life your whole everything you've built all your beliefs and everything on that on an on a subconscious level like to deal with is it's it's a lot Mm -hmm. and some people I think are just not ready for it they're just not equipped for it and I also feel on a you know on a soul level I do believe that and this is just a personal belief you know I don't have any proof of it (laughs) but my personal belief is that we are all of our we're we're souls we're souls in human form and we we came here at this time to to fulfill a role and to be on a certain soul path and some people's path is just not to see Um, also you know some people you know we've got to remember for example a lot of people are on a lot of medications you know like they're dumbed down you know they're, they're dumbed down with food with medications you know with the tv programming like every single day it is incredibly difficult to then you know be like oh i'm awake i can see everything now when you're so dumbed down and so you know we've got lifetimes of conditioning we've got traumas from childhood we've got you know all of the environmental stuff and the TV and like, there's so many different things that have us in this kind of like um, a sleep zombified um, way of being. But I think it's, um, it's kind of shocking that people aren't seeing, but, but it's also, I can also see kind of see why, like if I really put myself in, in their position. And I also think that, you know, the, 
the the consequences of seeing especially on a on a relationship and community level can be really harsh as we've talked about if you're if every single person you know and all of your family and all your colleagues and everybody you know is also bought into the narrative and also not you know not seeing or not speaking about it for you to actually put your head above the parapet and like <laughs> be admit and be different is for most people it's like such an intense fear that they just won't won't do it this fear of abandonment this fear of like not having community you know being ostracized it's a, such a huge fear for, for people whether they realize it or not whether it's kind of in the in more in the sort of unconscious or whether they're conscious of it that's a really big thing too so i think there's you know there's it's almost like i feel now there's there's three groups of people like key groups of people there's the people like us who are like fully aware and speaking out there's the people who are completely asleep like they're just they're just not seeing at all but then there's there's a, i think there's a lot of people who are seeing mm. but they're just they don't have the confidence to actually make it known and to and and to speak up and and you know often people say to me you know there's not enough people awake and I'm and I say well not enough for what well not enough to change things well what does that even mean anyway you know there isn't going to be this end point where it just is suddenly this utopia in a few months time like it's like um you know but I, I actually do think there are there are you don't need like seven eight billion people to be awake to create change you know, you can, you, we've seen individuals and small groups of people throughout history creating enormous change to creating great movements. I mean, look at the truckers in Canada now, like what's happening there. Yeah. You do not need like billions of people awake. What you need is all of the aware people to be fully in their power mm -hmm. and really embodying sovereignty and embodying the truth and spreading that to others. That's what we really need. But I know many people who are aware, they know what's going on and they are very quiet yeah. and they keep themselves themselves because they don't want to damage their business or um, they don't want to, you know, cause too much of a fuss with the family or it's just easier. You know, people, many people I know who are awake will, will wear a, a mask, you know, everywhere just and the reason they give me is I just can't be bothered with the hassle. Right, yeah. I just can't be bothered with it. Like, oh, I'm just, I'm just tired of it. Like, so there's people are not in fully in their power. So I think the whole idea that not enough people are awake to create great change is a myth. They and and actually that the, they want us to think that there's not many people awake and we're this crazy minority. And I actually don't think it's the case. And so that's why, you know, I really love helping people step into, into that power. Um, but to your point as well about the, ne the need to wake people up, I actually agree that there's, there's a lot of ego there, but it's, it's, it's really fear. I, this is my personal view. Because if, if you have an urgency, like, to, to make people wake up, like, they've got to wake up, even though they don't want to wake up, like they're not hearing you, they're not, they're not listening, they're not, they're not there. This, the, the energy of uh, that kind of forceful energy, um, well, firstly, it's not very helpful, but I also think it, deep, deep down, you know, having spoken with clients and stuff, it, it comes from like this fear. It's like if enough people don't, like there's, well, there's a belief that many people need to be awake and they all need to be, you know, every single person needs to be like, disobeying and not complying and everybody needs to be speaking out because if they don't what they really mean is if they don't my life is going to be impacted like I'm afraid of what's going to happen because otherwise you would say well I just surrender to what is if you had no fear you would just say well I'm just going to keep speaking my truth and living my truth and doing my thing and I know that I'll impact people but I'm not attached to the outcome. I'm not attached to whether they wake up or not. That's, that's down to them. Like, I'm open to whatever happens. That's surrender. That's, that's acceptance. And most people are not there. There is a lot of, like, fear, um, you know, and as I said, our traumas and our wounding, 
is coming up, um, you know, for, for a lot of us. And, and, and also this, yes, from ego, the need to be right. So I put out a post on social media the other day about people waking, the, all of the people who are starting to wake up now, because there are quite a few. And, my, and I was encouraging people to, um, to have empathy and to, un, and to put yourself in their shoes and to not be saying, I told you so. Mm. If that's ego. I was right. And I know it's tempting. I've had so many temptations to do this. We all have. It's like, oh, after two years, you've finally seen. I've been telling you this. Like, I told you so. Where's my apology? All of these things. I see these comments all the time. Um, But just to answer to that as well, I think we should allow ourselves to celebrate, you know, the release of like, but obviously not in a kind of like up in your face, wagging the finger kind of thing. Exactly. But but allow us ourselves to celebrate that more people are not only aware and awake, but they're actually going, do you know what? I'm going to clear my, my, my voice and maybe put something on Facebook and, you know, just block the comments. (laughs) Just like if it's your first one, (laughs) you know what I mean? Yes. Just because it, that onslaught of, of, um, and I think also with a lot of people not putting stuff out as well as they've seen how badly other people have been treated yes. and they don't know. And they might even have been part of that crew at one point, you know, putting those nasty comments and underneath someone's post, yes. wishing them death by, <laughs> death yes. by the virus, you know, yes. this, oh, I've had many of those, <laughs> but, but then suddenly they've <gasps> seen it and like, Oh my God, they were right. You know, there's going to, I mean, they, I, there just needs to be, and I agree with you a lot of comp- compassion and forgiveness on both sides but sometimes yeah. you just need to revel in the fact that you were right but just find a kind of a nice way of of letting it be known and maybe do that maybe do the dance as well the hot stepper dance as well that yeah. really just like gave me so much joy because I was just like yeah but you know sometimes we can try and be we there's a, we just need to find that level of kind of like righteous compassion and anger and forgiveness and everything like that powerful going like okay like we're here now let's let's move on and yeah. let's bring it down but i i hear you as well saying that you know we've got this concern that if not enough of us are aware then it's it's all going you know we're all going to be stuck in the metaverse <laughs> with <Yeah>. barcodes <laughs> you know it's like and and but the thing is though it sounds the thing is it sounds so preposterous but if you look at it it's like that is the plan yeah. um but there yes. is a way there is a way out of it and it's just like we just don't know the numbers the numbers have always been hazy as to like energetically how many people we need yes um yeah but you know like i I hear differing numbers over the years so we don't even really know what that's going to be but yeah absolutely (laughs) no i i I agree and i think i think also like we've also got to be kind to ourselves so if we do kind of act from ego or we do say something that's you know that's maybe not that compassionate that you know just to just to be aware of it you know like we're hu- we're human like we we you know we all have like these different emotions and we and you know especially when it's something that's really important to us like you know we're not perfect and and I think we have to really stop judging ourselves and you know like shaming ourselves and and, and just just have that awareness like oh okay like I see what happened there like I see what I did there and just like kind of saying okay like I'm going to be be more aware of that um and yes you know celebrating like I think the, celebrating others waking up like and and like kind of having that like yes you know like the work I'm doing is like working to really help because what we're doing really is we're like serving people mm. because it, whilst it might be painful to go through the waking up process, you're actually serving someone by like helping them to see. And I've had many messages from people over the last couple of years saying, you know, seeing your content or seeing your interview you did with this person actually started to help me to see. And like, pe- so, so everything we do, like it's having an impact, even just the way that you interact with somebody in a store your attitude, your energy, everything we do has an impact. And so just really being aware of that. But yeah, celebrating like, like, you know, like I have to admit, you know, I, I mean, a couple of years ago, I was like, okay, it's going to get to this and this is going to happen and this is going to happen. And then every time it happens, I'm like, yes, see, I was right. <laughs> I was right. 
oh they won't do vaccine passports you're insane I was like here we go (laughs) but it's it's like it's kind of like so yeah but I'm the thing is it's like there's nothing wrong with doing that I'm just aware that it's my ego but Mm. the ego isn't bad like it's not something to be like shamed it's just like I'm just aware like oh okay like I see what I did there you know and just having that having that awareness and and um and and also celebrating and encouraging people who are starting to see and who are starting to stand up because we all need encouragement like we all we want inspiration we want leadership we want encouragement we want you know community and for me this is the most powerful thing you know with the community when you're in a community of people who are kind of like-minded and like-hearted it is so easy to be yourself Mm. It's so easy to speak your truth. Like for me, it was really hard at the beginning because of all the abuse and everything I was getting. Um, But now, like it's great because everyone who I'm connected with is kind of like me. And so it's like you just encourage each other and you, and you, and you, you know, like challenge each other and you kind of celebrate each other. And, and, and so that's why I think it's really, really important that, you know, this was the point of my, you know, couple of social media posts this week was, was, you know, resist the temptation to criticize people and shame them and 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 like you should have known before or like you know like I knew two years ago you know and actually celebrate them and encourage them and be like welcome (laughs) like welcome (laughs) to the team welcome to team freedom this is awesome it is so freeing because you don't have to concern yourself with there's there's so so little effort being there you don't I don't find myself thinking about what what I'm saying when I'm with people that I can speak about like there's no barrier there's no boundary if anything I I like think that my knowledge is quite limited when I'm speaking to certain people because they've just been looking into things yeah for longer so there's nowhere that I can go really that that I'm gonna buck against the wall or any resistance whereas sometimes if I'm in different company where they're just not in that space I find myself like checking every single word that I'm saying because I'm like, am I going to upset them? Am I going to think? I mean, and it's just easier sometimes to just not say anything, which just just gets misread at the same time as well. So we all, and, and also to think, even though we don't think that we're making a difference by doing what we do on social media or at offerings or anything like that, the fact that we're going against counter the narrative has made a has made a difference because if we all just kind of sat back and just let it all run the way they wanted to with like nobody speaking out we wouldn't be here right now of course not this place is like you know midpoint or wherever we are in this kind of like story of the game or whatever's going on Mm -hmm. with this whole thing Mm -hmm. if there weren't all of these different voices from different accounts big small in between putting out stuff that just went against the whole thing then they wouldn't none of this would have happened so we we've got to kind of like give ourselves props for that really yeah a hundred percent like this work is not easy like I'll be honest I didn't plan this was not in my five-year plan (laughs) like you know when I when I and it was funny when I was in so the 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 year before um this all all started I was in Bali and I and I remember having this really insane, clear, like, vision. Mm. And it was, like, a vision that related to, like, my work in the world and what I'm doing now. But it didn't really make sense to me because it hadn't all started yet, you know, all the pandemic and everything. And it was amazing to me to look back and go, oh, wow. Like, and I journaled it all. And I was like, this is, oh, my goodness. I knew this, like, and it was just like, wow, this kind of, like, just this vision of of what I had that was just that was just so powerful and then and then I didn't know what it was and then it was the march for me it was it was March when it just you know I was hearing about this thing and I was like "Mm, this seems a bit weird and then it was just like and I just you know really like uh you know stepped into that and and it's not been easy like it especially at the start and I think we've all we've all felt this, you know, it is not easy. It's much easier to just, you know, I could have just buckled down and just continued focusing on my work. You know, one of my one of my friends said to me, you know, you because I was I was working with like, you know, sports professionals and 
you know, like not necessarily awake because they weren't like at that time necessarily like awake people mm. and CEOs and entrepreneurs. And, um, you know, I remember one of my friends saying to me, if you carry on sharing this stuff, like you are going to like lose, because this is when I first started sharing stuff, like you're going to lose clients, like these people are not going to like, you know, are not going to like it. And I did. I lost most of my, most of my business mm. because they were like, you know, maybe now they're seeing, I think a couple of them are actually like from what I've, what I've heard, but you know, like people are like starting to see, but back then in the first few months, there were many people that didn't see, and there's, there's no judgment on them. Like, you know, there were many people that didn't, didn't know from the outset what was happening, but it, you know, it has consequences. And then the consequences of like the pain of people criticizing you. And that's, that, that, is what um triggers a lot of like childhood wounding oh yeah like you know so for me even for me you know like to even though I was like awake and I was feeling very very compelled to share and I didn't stop it was painful Mm. you know when I get a message from someone that I'm friends with like telling me like I'm crazy and like you know what's happened to you like it like and some really vicious comments from certain people like it hurts because it's it's bringing up these things within us from you know earlier in life like abandonment criticism you know the ego doesn't like that like it's just all this stuff so from an emotional perspective it's pretty traumatic to go through all of that and so I really understand and again I understand and empathize with people who aren't wanting to 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 speak up but I just um, I just hope that when we share our stories, you know, and the more of us that talk about this and about how freeing it is and about how you actually do attract new community and like, yes, it's painful, but there's so much freedom and lightness on the other side of it and just to encourage people. And then when they're going through that process to support them and encourage them, yeah. because the goal is not to be right. The goal is to like have as many people you know as possible like in this movement and creating the the new earth Mm. um so we just have to kind of like you know bear that in mind and and really just yeah welcome everybody who wants to uh you know join join the good side yeah (laughs) it's worth it and yeah like and and just thinking of how the change happened for me around that time was just seeing because I had that I've been doing this podcast since 2017 so all I like I didn't really change much before it was very much about women and women and women but I knew that it was something something different had to happen and even the kind of the leading words to it didn't really change it's something that I'd written like three years prior Mm -hmm. and been inspired to write and then it was it was just like tools for the awakening so or before it was tools for the awakening woman it's like no I need to just make it for the awakening the awakening time and the awakening people and just really shift into that start doing more solo episodes and then when I'd found out about great awakening report because there was that word in common you know even when I I'd reached out to them and you know started to work with them before I, there were moments where I was just like the minute that I step into doing this is this is going to be a different space and this could mean so much and it's going to trigger a lot of people because at at the time it was so politically led you know by the whole Trump situation so people were so triggered by that that I'm like okay there's that but like underneath all of that there's actually more than that that bit's going to go away we're going to like scrub this whole need for leaders and political figures and we're going to see who people really really are you know that we've been caught in this trap of left and right and up and down and it's all pretty much the same thing yeah so that served its purpose for a little while you know and then when we come back to the truth of what is going on here um and and I'm on my journey as well you know like within the truth community there are a lot of voices there Mm -hmm. are a lot of people bringing information and intel that are equally as deceptive as the mainstream yes so for us as well we're constantly having to 
work on our own discernment to yes. work on our own need to be led in certain directions you know we have yeah. to really rid ourselves of needing saviors needing people you know <laughs> yeah I couldn't agree honestly I couldn't agree more and I've talked about this quite a lot like I I feel like again it's a brilliant opportunity for us to start to see that we do not need you know gurus like even in so in the spiritual world how many kind of I guess well-known or sort of spiritual leaders you know you're 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 Dalai Lama you're like Sadhgurus like Deepak Chopra all these people yeah suddenly supporting the vaccine supporting wearing masks and it, it's it's again it's this unveiling it's been showing like who people are and I think it was necessary to make us see that actually the person we really need to trust and follow is us and this is for me so this is sovereignty sovereignty is like really knowing yourself trusting yourself you know being fully in your power and sure, listening to you can listen to other people's like guidance and stuff. I think that's great. You know, it helps us to grow. But then not looking to anyone to lead, like to to be the one to tell us how to feel, to tell us what to think, to tell us what to do. Like, you know, we have to learn how to discern for ourselves and how to listen to our heart mm -hmm. and our intuition and how to know what's right for us. And I agree with you that there is a lot of there's so much in the in the you know awake if we want to call it that community um there is so much information flying around and i think one of the traps that we get pulled into is just this obsession with the rabbit hole and knowing more and the chaos and what's the next thing. And like, there's a bit of an obsession with that and, and in general, and, and there's an in, a lot of energy that goes into that. Mm. And, you know, I am, you know, I've had a period of time, especially in 2020 where I was kind of like that. Cause there was just, so I was going really deep and there was just so much and I was like, Oh my God. And then like, we're all sharing all that stuff with each other. But I think now we've reached a point where, you know, like we know enough, like we don't need to, we don't need to be going into the minutia of like everything that's happening and also speculating about what might be happening or trying to, convince each other that we're right because again this is where we see the ego coming up a lot again is even in the the kind of the awake or truth community is you know there's a lot of um arguing and division that i've been observing yeah. you know whether it's over like you know there's still people that you know think that certain political parties are going to like help or whether there's like it's like flat earth versus non-flat earth there's like and even like you know you know the, oh well you you know someone I, I did a post on social media the other day and someone someone commented like oh like you're not <clears throat> you're not truly awake because you don't understand this blah 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 and that and so there's a lot of criticism and like and again it all boils down to wanting to control and wanting to be right we, we, you know, we all have that kind of need to like, and many people have issues with control. Like most people have some kind of control <laughs> issues. So we want people to see it our way. Yeah. We think we know best. We want to control what like, you know, the, the fact that, you know, like, oh, others think this. No, I want them to think what I think. And so that again, there's a lot of, um, I think there's a lot of work for us to continue doing you know it is a journey it never ends the inner the inner work or the kind of inner work or the self work um because i think you know we we often have this we often use this term awake um but i think it can mean different things and for me there's a couple of different um i guess types of awake there's the awake which is you know about 9-11, you know about the pandemic, you know about all the other horrible stuff down the rabbit hole. So you're that level of awake, you know what's what. But you're not very awake from a, an inner perspective, from a spiritual perspective, from a consciousness perspective, you know, and doing the self-work. And there's also people who are doing like, who, who are all into the spiritual things, but they're like, oh no, that couldn't possibly be happening. Or they're like going and complying with everything. And that's a kind of like strange, you know, yeah. combination of people. But I think there are, there is a lot of opportunity for 
people who are, you know, awake to the truth of what's happening in the world to do that self-work and to really, you know, start to, um, you know, expand their consciousness and to start living more from the heart and, you know, and looking at their own healing, like we've got an opportunity to heal our trauma and, and all of these things. So I think this is, this is very important for us all to bear in mind because everything in the universe is energy. Mm -hmm. And so if we're arguing with each other and we're being negative and we're shaming people and we're doing all this stuff on a regular basis, like that's not helping it's not helping us either. It's not good for our, you know, our own internal state. So I think it's very important to be really aware and to be grounded and to be realistic and also to, you know, have that level of awareness and consciousness and be doing the, um, the, the inner work um, and not spiritually bypassing. So, you know, like just being like all sunshine and rainbows and, you know, everything is, all we need to do is meditate. I know a few people like this, bless them, yeah, where yeah. they're like, we just need to meditate and it will all change. I'm like, meditation is great and it does have an impact energetically. And we also need to get off our butts and actually do something okay. because if we all just like sit around meditating i don't actually think it's going to stop or it would have like halted any of the stuff that's happening so i think yeah. we have to do both yeah um, I agree. and I not be in denial and 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 it's and it's really good to have those people that are just bringing the light and you know but if you yeah. identify as light worker there's a word in there called work so let's do the work you know and yes. raising the vibration mm -hmm. isn't just about just kind of checking out of it you know and I think that toxic positivity which I heard the term yes. the other day and is can lead us down in it lead us into kind of inertia and righteous inertia where we're just like well you know my role here is just to just to be and that's cool maybe maybe it is but the only way that we bring light to truth is to actually look at the truth you can't just yeah. like not have any awareness of the truth by you have to look at it you don't have to take it on board there's some really dark things that are happening in this world yes. but you know there's a way of looking at it and being observant of it and being yes. and taking on the knowledge and not having it completely crush you and yeah. like I say it comes again to that sovereignty that if you've got that root in yourself and that connection with yourself you can look at the darkest of things and not be affected by it but be knowledgeable of it yes. and that awareness just kind of let lifts it that way but by Absolutely. not looking at it or allowing dark information to like completely trash you then yes. you've still got a lot to do so there's, yeah. there's so many layers to this yeah no, there are there are and I, I agree I always say observe but don't absorb mm. like not like have an awareness like I like and, and, and it takes practice again this is a journey like all of this work you know looking at dark stuff I remember when I first started going down the rabbit hole and looking at some of the really horrible stuff and I was like oh and I actually felt sick I remember at one point I was like I felt dizzy and I felt sick and it was my it was my literally my body and the traumas and stuff coming up like like I can't believe this is the kind of thing that is going on in the world and it's just mm. it was just painful and I was having to have that experience many people will just block and I've done this in the past will just not look at it or they'll look at it and then when they start to feel the emotions they'll just check they'll check out and they'll go and numb themselves and they won't look at it again and it's just like oh love and light only butterflies and rainbows um and so I think it's very important that we you know I I I talk about streetwise spirituality. It's like, yes, the the meditation, the you know, all of these things, like and being the light and the love, and that's all essential. Um, but we also have to be really aware of what's going on and and speak to speak to the truth and look at the darkness, not only in the world but within ourselves, because we all have you know our own our own stuff and our own shadows. And so being prepared to do that work, that for me is a real spiritual warrior like yeah. willing to do that hard, like inner work, as well as like being out there in the world. And it's, you know, and I just take my hat off, honestly, to every single person that is doing this work and is in, you know, is on this path. Mm. Um, because we really are the ones who are changing things as a, you know, collective, like it's, it's very easy sometimes to think, 
oh, well, what, what can I do as one person? Like, I can't make a difference. And many people say this. I've heard it over and over again. But you have an impact on every single person you come into contact with. And when you then, when you add up all of the things, you know, all of the people, all of the energies, it's like, you know, if I manage to like wake up 10 people, what if they then manage to wake up 10 people? And then they, and then, and but we're also doing it with love. And so we're spreading the good vibes as well. Like this is, this is how we've seen it go from hardly anybody being awake two years ago to now a lot of people, like millions and millions and millions of people. Mm. But as you said, by, by us all just playing our part, and, and, and you never you know, know who's what, you never know who's watching you. You just mm -hmm. absolutely don't no, know. And a don't. Lot, many times they won't tell you. And no, I most was, of the time, yeah. Yeah. On the, uh, I was at a rally on um Saturday and I just walked through and someone I haven't seen for like years. I used to work with her every now and again. And she's like, I've been watching you. I watch everything you do. And she rarely likes anything that mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. She doesn't send me messages or anything. She's on my mailing yes. list and she just quietly is like, I'm watching you. I can yeah. see what you're doing. Keep doing it, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Some and there are so many people that are just watching you there and are. just learning from you and not saying a thing. And yeah. just really have to rem remember that it's a lot of the time the biggest effect, if I think about the people, that had an effect on my life a lot of the time I never got to tell them so you yeah. know absolutely and this is such an important point and I have these experiences as well and and if I just think you know even about <clears throat> some of the things that I learn you know when I read a book or I listen to a podcast or I see a, you know read a post that somebody's done most of the time I don't interact with it but yeah. it has a real impact on me and so we have to understand that we can have that impact mm -hmm. and we don't need to be attached to what that impact is it's just having a knowing having the knowing that we are impacting people. We are always impacting people. When I go into the store to buy some water and I'm happy and positive and interactive with the person behind the counter, they are going to have a different experience. They might then be really cheerful with the next customer and then it just goes on and on. Like you never know anything you do in, in your life has an impact on other people and I think it's just so important to remember that you literally can be transforming people's lives like really and it's 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 really beautiful and it's a shame we don't always get to know but yeah. but yeah I've had many experiences where someone said oh I've been following your content for the last year and I'm like oh have you like I didn't even know you know it's like just yeah. you don't necessarily know these things and it's it's really you know it's really really awesome to to know that you know we're on this path and it's it just for me it just feels good it feels right like it's not easy but I know it's the path and now I actually feel I'm feeling super positive at the moment because I can see that there are so many people who are starting to see and there's a real sense of community you know when I look at what's happening in Canada Who'd have thought, like, who'd have thought all the truckers, like, would this would happen? Like, it, it's, it's amazing. And just seeing how emotional people are and how happy they are and just this amazing support. And I think, you know, it's the rising of the human spirit. So I feel we're really in this time of, yes, there's chaos. Yes, there's going to be some, there's going to be lots more bullshit coming. I mean, come on. <laughs> be aware, people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. People that are like, you know, people in the UK, they're like, oh, well, the mandates are gone. We're going back to normal. I'm like, uh-uh. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. There's many. There's not, I know. It's like they're just backing up so that they can like, you know, because they know Change many. Change and push, down, push harder. Gear. Yeah. And they know that people are waking up and it's like also psychological testing. You know, if we do mm. this, how do people respond? respond it's all cycle it's it's all psychological tactics it's it's mind control it's coercion it's it's gaslighting it's you know it's it's all of the things and um and so i think people really need to be aware of that but also to balance that out with the positive you know there's a lot of we are wired for negativity and i'm noticing a lot of negativity you know people telling me oh, well, it's not over yet. I don't know why you're celebrating, you know, and, and there's, a, there's a real kind of like people are getting stuck in the fact that there's a lot of terrible things happening around the world and that, you know, it's not over. And, you know, it's true that that's the case, but 
we also, at the same time, it's very, very important that we celebrate the wins. Look how far we've come in two years. Look how many people are aware. Look at how many people are taking action. The marches, the convoys, like the, the world is changing and it isn't going to be a quick fix. Mm. This is going to take a while and it's well, an it's evolution. Decades, you know, to set the plan up. So yeah. we're not going to reverse out of it in two years even yeah. as much as we'd it's, like to. Of course, it's an evolution. And when people say to me, when is this going to end, which is another common question, I'm like, what? When is what going to end? All this shit, like all this stuff was already happening yeah. before. You just didn't know it. So now it's being like exposed. And then obviously there's, you know, the, the pandemic and all of, all of the things that come with that. And there will be more. And it's like there is no end point. It's just going to evolve. And we just have to, you know, play our role and, and, and you know, be part of that shift that's happening. And at the same time, you know, I really want people to, to, to not stop living their lives because I think for a lot of us, I mean, my life went on hold for a few months, you know, in 2020. It was just like, you know, I was just, I was just watching videos all day long. I was doing online content. I got exhausted and I was just so obsessed with what was going on. I think it's important that we're aware, but we also, you know, also continue with our lives, continue building our businesses, you know, continue trying to connect with like-minded people, creating our own communities, creating our own, you know, systems and mm. and things outside, rather than just trying to change the old broken system. It's very important that we don't continue feeding that. So yes, we're speaking truth and we're taking action to to, to wake people up, which is going to have a collective effect. But don't put loads of energy into that old system and trying to change it. It's like people that are like, yay, I can't wait for the election in a couple of years' time. They're like, we, we'll change things. I'm like, oh, my goodness, no. no. <laughs> That's just <laughs> like back on the merry-go-round. It's like, don't, don't, don't let's it's, not do that. Yeah, or just, or just, you know, or just signing another petition. It's like, no, no, no. Like, we have to, we have to, um, we have to also, you know, start looking at how do we create the life that we want. And I know many people, for example, who are creating um, homeschooling cooperatives and, and food growing and, um, you know, meetups like for awake people and like people are just even in the most like oppressed like areas, you know, I was in a part of America where it's like so like it's just so, so dark and crazy and like everyone's wearing like two masks. But there are still awake meetups. There are still meetups and, and socials and things of people finding each other and and um, and doing the stuff that they enjoy. So I think it's really important that we do that because our well-being is imperative. Like we can't give to the world, to others, our best if we're not taking care of ourselves you know we can't serve effectively if we're depleted and we're stressed and we're like up till three in the morning on our phones looking at more conspiracy videos or whatever it might be you know we've really got to take care of ourselves um and and build our resilience and 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 stuff and take care of each other as well importantly yeah thank you so much this is such a juicy conversation. Oh, I know, I love speaking with <laughs> so, you. Honestly, so I could talk about this stuff all day. <laughs> Me and you, but honestly, there's so many different kind of like, oh gosh, we'll reverse and go down, especially yeah. like the the one that fascinates me the most, and maybe I just need to think about it more, is being the response slash reaction of the spiritual community. That's been like one of mine, like, wow's. It's, um, yeah, it's, that's you been know, a big on shock. So many, so many different levels and how a lot of those teachings or a lot of what it was meant to bring to people in terms of their personal strength just didn't deliver because it didn't, it wasn't available for them to tap into at the time that it was necessary for, for them to kind of go, okay, I've got the tools, let's dig in and go. It just, it, it, yeah, it, it's honestly I could I could spend a couple of hours on this one as well. Yeah, it's anytime fascinating. I get one, I'm like, oh my, how did we get I know. I, by this one, it's. it's I know. It's I know. Amazing. I agree with you. Like, I think the 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 spiritual community and also for me the holistic health community, 
mm. or that you know the functional medicine like some some people who I like you know years ago like I really looked up to and I learned a lot from and I'm not taking away from that like I think it's important we realize like if someone's kind of into the agenda and 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 whatever like it doesn't mean that everything they've ever taught is rubbish yeah it's just but, yeah you know really... but but many of them you know like do- doctor like holistic doctors functional medicine practitioners like people I thought would never ever support you know masks and vaccines and and be talking about this like you know real pandemic and they are and so it's been yeah the health community and the spiritual community like the two groups of people I thought would just not be doing that at all ah oh, and it is yeah it is a fascinating it's fascinating but yeah it's a it's a whole other <laughs> it's a whole other thing yeah, super surprised by that but um like we say things are revealing themselves so who know what who knows what they used to create their business and platform in the first place and maybe it was payback time you know you know <laughs> yeah yeah and, and i think you know they, they, there can be many different reasons and people are um you know we're we're starting to yeah it's the exposing it's the unveiling it's like who who was just talking the talk because it's very easy to it's very easy for people to to say all the things yeah um and to pretend to be you know a certain type of person but that most people are just avatars anyway they're just putting on an act you know to, for everybody else and when it comes down to it you know and something major like this happens where you're really tested um that's that's when we we really see and i think there's probably you know various different reasons why this happens but yeah it's definitely fascinating can you just let every everyone know where to find you and also if you've got anything coming up any programs any and talk about your membership space as well. I have you know, Instagram and I have a Telegram channel. Um, I'm not on Facebook anymore. I just gave up on that like a while <laughs> ago. It was just so toxic for me. So I have all of those channels and I um, have a membership community, which is opening soon. I also have a free workshop um, for people who are um, awake and wanting support with navigating these times it's all about perspective shifts and how we can if we can change our perspectives around things that we can we can actually you know feel less stress and find it easier to navigate some of these scenarios um, that we're finding ourselves in so that's coming very soon and also the membership community is coming soon and that's really for anyone who who wants to you know support with have support with the um, self-work the inner work the healing their wellness um, stepping into sovereignty you know really stepping into who they are and their power um, and you know and how we navigate all of these scenarios like all the stuff we've been talking about like how do we navigate all of this like without losing the plot and going insane um, and you know and actually feel like more happy and joyful <laughs> than stressed um, and and you know doing that in community so it's kind of a combination of like teachings from me and guests and also you know the community element there soon I don't know when this is going to be going to be out but we'll put the latest link to um uh the the sign up page or to um my mailing list depending on yeah yeah. thank you Carol it's been awesome thank you Laura Jane for this week's episode and thank you for listening you can find out more about me from my website, which is carolmaywittick.com, C-A-R-O-L-M-A-E-W-H-I-T-T-I-C-K.com. On Facebook as Carol May Wittick and Instagram as Kasmic. I've also opened a Telegram channel for Her Conversations. Just search Her Conversations on Telegram and you can join me there. Until next week, enjoy and speak soon.